distinctly remember as a kid laughing so hard I would literally pee my pants. Unfortunately, this is a relatively common thing for women, especially women that have had children, um, to experience. In fact, in the research it says anywhere from 4% to 35% of women actually experience this type of incontinence. Now I get that's a big window, but each study looks at like a different age group and a different kind of incontinence. So the amount varies and they basically say it gets higher of a percentage as women get older. So what do we do about this? Like this super common problem, is this just something that happens because we've had kids or what's the deal? While it is really common, it doesn't have to be normal. And the reason I say it doesn't have to be normal is because we can improve and make incontinence better. And the way that we do this is by getting to know our pelvic floor, strengthening our pelvic floor, and making sure it's gonna work at times when we need it to work. So if you think about your, um, your pelvic floor as the bottom of a pop can. So think about your whole torso as a pop can, if you will. The top is your diaphragm. This is where you open the can of pop. The front is your abdominal muscles, the back is your back muscles, and the bottom are your pelvic floor muscles. Let's say you shake that can of pop up. If any area of the can gets a puncture or you go to open the top, it is going to spray out that weak point. The same happens with our core or our you know, torso. When there is pressure, which there is when we laugh, if you laugh, you build pressure in your torso or our pop can, if you will, and it's going to let loose wherever the least, the, the weak spot is. So a lot of times after we have children, our pelvic floor is our weak spot. So this is why we pee a little when we laugh or even when we sneeze and cough and things like that. All these things that build up pressure in our torso or in our core. So what do we do about this problem? Well, you need to work on your pelvic floor muscle strength and coordination. So your pelvic floor muscles work in two different ways. You have muscles that work like your sprinters, so they are like fast, and they, but they don't last very long. And then you have endurance muscles, and these muscles can like run a marathon, right? When you think about laughing, it's usually short bursts of this pressure in your torso, but you need it to be pretty strong in order to make sure you don't leak at all. So you wanna, first of all, get to know, can I feel my pelvic floor muscles working? So if you go ahead and contract, squeeze your pelvic floor muscles up and in, that is a kegel as most people, or kegel, however you like to say it. That is a pretty commonly known thing, but sometimes people can't exactly feel it. So if you don't feel anything with that cue, think about taking your tailbone and bringing it forward and up, like you were gonna pass gas and you were trying to stop it because it's just not an opportune time. Think about your tailbone coming forward and lifting up. That is another way to close your pelvic floor muscles. Another way that you can think about it is if you were peeing and you were trying to stop the flow of urine. I don't love this analogy because it really isn't a good idea to stop the flow of urine a lot like when you're in the bathroom. So if you need to do this to recognize your pelvic floor muscles, that's fine. But don't make a habit of like stopping and starting your pee because it really creates bad habits that could lead to other um, incontinence issues uh, down the road. So now that you know like how to activate your pelvic floor muscles, you know that they're there, we're not exactly sure how strong they are. Like could they withhold this gush of pressure that happens when they laugh? Probably not. So you want to work on strengthening that. You want to work on squeezing that tight and pretty quickly because when you laugh it, it happens quickly. So we call this practice like a quick flick. Uh, the other thing to know is after you squeeze, make sure that you are fully relaxing your pelvic floor muscles. Some people get in the tendency or have the habit of always keeping them a little bit closed. And this is like if you walked around with a weight in your hand, even if it wasn't heavy, eventually your bicep would get tired and give out. And that's the moment when we laugh and then we can no longer stop urine from coming out when we don't want it to. So make sure you're fully relaxing between each squeeze. So now that you've practiced squeezing quickly, 
you want to practice it in different positions because we're not always laughing when we're sitting down. We're not always laughing standing up. We might be laying down, we might be sitting, we might be kneeling on the floor with our kids. Like we just don't know where we're going to be when we laugh and need to be able to not pee our pants, right? So practice this in different positions. The thing about practicing Kegels or pelvic floor strengthening is that you don't want to just sit and do 100 and then, oh, check that off my list today. You want to do like 10 or 20 here and 10 or 20 there and really spread it out throughout the day because that's more functional. That's what real life is. I always say when you feel like you're not really squeezing anymore or it's just a really weak kind of piddly squeeze, you should stop, wait a while and try again later. The more you can spread out small groups of kegels throughout the day, the better and more practical it is for you. The other thing that you can do is try to challenge your pelvic floor a little bit by adding those kegels to functional activities. So let's say you're going to squeeze and then you're going to do a little baby hop. Or you're going to squeeze and do a jumping jack. You're going to squeeze and then squat down and pick something up off the floor. This is how we might actually use our muscles and it gets them used to practicing like firing quick and then letting go and doing it on command when we need it to. So this is the progression of how you want to get stronger. If this doesn't exactly answer your question, I have a course all about incontinence that you could check out. Um, this is something, like I said, a lot of moms deal with after having their babies. So I created an online course that gives you a lot more detail about it. Or you could contact me directly and we could do like a one-on-one -on -one consult where I could walk you through a step-by-step -step progression of how to make sure you can laugh and enjoy mom life without having to worry about Am I going to pee when I do this? Did I bring an extra pair of underwear? Do I have pads just in case? These are things I don't want moms to have to deal with because there is a pretty simple solution to it. So check out one of those two options if this video didn't answer all of your questions. And thanks so much for hanging with me till the end. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you like the video today. I put out videos every single week with tons of tips and tricks for moms just like you.